So here we go with another 4th gen game, because again, I'm low on my 5th gen stock, which I'll stream later this week if I have nothing going on, so I can get some matches going, so there's that. But anyways, hey guys, while <clears throat> we got a match here today against Congressional Wombat, just a standard OU match from the 4th gen era, because that's really all I did besides the occasional UU, but uh, you know, it was just match thingy. Uh, my team, because you know, I explained the te my team in 4th gen, but in 5th but then I don't explain their team because I don't know anything about their team prior. But uh, my team, I got the lead Life Orb is Elf. I got a Scarf Log on, Defensive Rotom. Uh, I forget what kind of Snorlax that is, actually, because I don't use anything else in this match from this Snorlax that really says anything. I think it's Rest Talking. Got a uh, Offensive Starmie with Leftovers instead of Life Orb. And then, ah, uh, Physical Mix Ape. So anyways, let's get into this match. Because, uh, yeah. So I got Azel versus Gyarados here. Figure, I know Zoe likes to use, uh bounce Gyarados because she made a set that was bounce with a uh, power herb so I figure all right she's either going to want to go for that or she's going to want to predict me to just stay and go for psychic or go for rocks and then go out to something else so I figure all right I should you turn out because then that'll give me good initiative if she wants a bounce and if she switches out I get switch initiative and she does go out to a T-Tar which is most likely scarfed because of the fact that she brought it in on an Aze Elf so that is kind of cool because now I can go on a flag on force her out again even if I didn't force her out with a U-turn, I get switch initiative to uh, counter whatever move she goes for, because, uh, you know, that's what T-Tar does. But anyways, uh, brings in Gyarados. I decided to scare out with Starmie as opposed to Rotom, because I figure, well, I don't know anything else on her team. I figure she might be scared back into Tyranitar, predicting a Thunderbolt, because uh, Gyarados can be a bit annoying, so she might want to do that. But she actually has a Snorlax on her team, so that'll take the Hydro Pump actually pretty decently. Like, <clears throat> actually, it does about 25%, so... That's not too bad, but at the same time, it's still kind of shitty, but... Well, it's shitty for me. For her, it might be okay, but I, I I wish that did a little bit more. But it is a Snorlax, after all, what are you supposed to expect? So I'm not really sure what kind of Snorlax she is. I'm going to assume Curse, just because standard Snorlax thing to do. So I go to Infernape thinking, okay, she's probably going to Curse up so I can get a close combat off. But she goes for Body Slam, and I'm like, fuck! But I don't get paralyzed, so that is actually very nice, so... Ape gets to fight on another day, because I'm going to need this and Flygon to take on her uh, <clears throat> her Snorlax, so I need to try and preserve this thing as best possible, and not getting paralyzed is good. So, I figure she's going to want to switch out now, because, uh, you know, the thing of taking a hit, and I don't know the rest of her team, so I don't know if she's want to going to want to go out to something else to take close combat, or just Gyarados, so I just decided to go for U-turn, even though that extra damage isn't a good idea, I might as well just do it. <clears throat> going to Rotom here. Because, uh, good Gyarados counter in 4th gen, well, then again in 5th gen too, but the fact that you can use any Rotom form and it doesn't really matter is something you can only do in 4th gen. So, <clears throat> she goes into Roserade. I went for Will-O-Wisp just because, uh, most of you guys will not appreciate a burn, but Roserade will not mind it that much because Natural Cure plus might have Rest, so that's going to kind of be a thing. But burn it, don't really have anything else I can do to it too well because I do see the leftovers meaning that it's probably going to be more defensive so what I'm going to do is I figure she's going to set up hazards of some kind that I don't really care about so I go into Azelf get my rocks going and maybe fire off a psychic or something but we'll see how that goes but she does not want her Roserade to go down yet she wants that second layer up so she's going to go to Gyarados mainly as death water because she could also be predicting the U-turn predicting me to predict her T-Tar so she might as well go to Gyarados because uh Gyaradosness so get my rocks going which there's a lot of switching in this game, so rocks would have been really important if she had them, but looking at her team so far, I don't see anything that would have them besides T-Tar, but the fact that that thing is most likely scarfed doesn't really show that it'll have it, so, you know, that's kind of a design flaw that she has on her team. But anyways, um, go for Psychic, just get some damage going, hope I can kill. Don't quite kill, but we both live with just a fucking sliver, but I'm going to decide to save my Azelf as Death Potter for later, because, uh... I can do that, plus, if I switch in after something dies, I get a free hit off, so I might as well try and save that for later. But, she does not have the same luxury since I got up Stealth Rock, so she might as well just go for Bounce randomly, thinking that she'll just die. But, like I said, I want to preserve his elf, and if she went for Waterfall, probably would have done a bit more Rotom, but, you know, that's going to kind of happen with stuff. So, she's going to go back out to Rose Red Connect, because that can easily take on my Rotom. So, she might as well just go out to the thing that easily counters it. Because maybe her Snorlax randomly doesn't have rest, or maybe she doesn't want to rest up yet. Whatever the case, she's just getting her final layer of Toxic Spikes up, which actually would make more sense than going into Snorlax right now. Because, I don't know. Maybe, maybe she's like cursed to attack or something. Who knows? Who fucking knows? 
But anyways, I went for will wisp there. Doesn't really matter because she rested up, so... That would have been completely and utterly useless, so that's kind of a thing. So here, I'm going to assume, since uh, she is asleep and has a natural cure, while it is 4th gen and sleep turns don't reset, you know, I'm thinking, alright, she's probably going to want to switch out, just expecting a Shadow Ball, so I'm going to go for Will-O-Wisp uh, twice, actually, both the turns she's sleeping, so I kind of waste those turns, which is like, very fucking smart, Chase. You know, sometimes I marvel at how smart you are. You know, over-predicting so much like this and just being a complete and utter dumbass. I mean, really, I wish I could be as smart as you. But anyways, um, yeah, like I said, I went for Will-O-Wisp twice because I was really just thinking she'd want to switch and just get rid of that sleep. But I guess she just feels way too safe to switch out and just figuring that I'm not going to switch. So, I don't know, I guess she's just being a bit ballsy. So, that's going to be a thing. But I'm finally going to start going for Shadow Ball. And since she is most likely defensive, that is not going to do anything. Man, sucks being defensive Rotom and not being able to touch a Roserade. I don't know. The point is, uh, fuck. Yeah, but I don't have anything that wants to switch into Roserade directly, so I got, what I kind of got to do here is I got to try and weaken this thing as much as possible, which is what I should have done when I was fucking asleep. But then again, it might have baited her into going for rest, so maybe that was my thought process there of going for Will-O-Wisp too, but... You know, this match is almost two years old in August. Well, it will be two years old in August. So, you know, I'm not going to remember everything perfectly. All I know is that I was probably just predicting her to switch out majorly. But now, I'm just going to keep firing off Shadow Balls because I do need some prior damage if I want to take her out with the proper thing. Because what I want to do is bring in Flygon. Why I want to bring in Flygon? Because uh, Infernite's taking too much damage. Uh, Starmie probably can't kill with Ice Beam. I don't want to leave in Snorlax for bait. So I might as well have Flygon there to uh, take her down, so I might as well do that. So, getting on to Flygon and just fire off said Earthquake, because at this point, I'm thinking all of her guys are hit by Earthquake, so I might as well just go for it and take out this Roserade, and then uh, I should have an advantage over most of her team, which is what I'm thinking right now. What I don't know is she has a Rotom of her own, which is a Rotom Wash, because, again, you could use any form you wanted in 4th gen, really, and it didn't matter, because most of the time you were running defensive or something, so it didn't really matter what kind you were running because you usually wouldn't run the normal move. Because, uh, yeah. So, going to Snorlax, because that's the best thing I have to take it on. I'm not sure what Rotom she is yet until I see the leftovers, so I see that it is defensive. So, that's going to kind of not be that bad. I mean, it'll be a bit annoying just because, uh, <clears throat> taking it down-wise, but for the most part, shouldn't be too hard. But I got Snorlax in. Figure she's going to want to switch out because I see that she is defensive. She could try and pain split. I don't know if she has it yet, though, because a lot of Rotoms back then don't carry pain split. Like, a lot of them are like three attack with uh, Will O Wisp or something if they're defensive. So, or they're just rest talk. But bringing Flygon after I use my Azel Death Fodder as she brings in T Tar. Uh, getting her for U turn, knowing she'll want to switch out. I'm not safe with Outrage uh, being able to 2k a Rotom yet. So, I want to get a little bit more damage going to the Stealth Rocks. So, go back into Snorlax, which will threaten her out, because it is a Snorlax after all. And just the way that she played it, I can tell that she probably isn't going to have the pain split. That, or she just really doesn't want to let me set up, so she might as well just go back out to T-Tar and try and hit me. And I unfortunately do not get the Paralyze there, which does kind of suck for me. I mean, I can get around it, that's no problem. I kind of want Snorlax to die anyway, so I can get a free switch of Flygon. But... It really doesn't matter either way, but now she's going to superpower like most T-Tars would back in 4th gen, because superpower, for the most part, offered the best coverage. So she's going to go for that. I'm thinking maybe I can live and fire off a body slam, but I actually can't, so I kind of die, which isn't a problem because I can go back into Flygon, and, you know, that's not a huge deal, but really, there's no reason I really need Snorlax, so... Going to Flygon, fire off the Outrage, which uh, will be an easy 2 KO at this point. Now that I got a little bit extra damage going, I probably could have taken it out before, but I just want to be safe because, you know, better safe than sorry, right? Right? Okay. I'm glad we can agree, maybe, sort of, not really. But another Outrage goes off, obviously we'll take out the Rotom, and uh, another opposition down. Because now, how it is, it's my Flygon, versus my Flygon, my Starmie, and my Infernape versus her T-Tar, her... Snorlax and her Infernape, which I don't know she, that she has an Infernape yet, but fire up with another Outrage because I had a three-turn Outrage, which is kind of cool, 
but uh, does a good chunk to the Snorlax, and she goes for her body slam, and I'm like, no para, no para, no para, no para. Fuck yeah, no para. Yeah, th this this match relatively wasn't that haxy, which is uh, odd, to say the least. But uh, <laughs> I got confused that turn, but then I didn't get confused. I snapped out, and I just fired up an outrage, which means whatever she brings in, I'm going to hit with a fucking outrage, which means either T-Tar is going to die, or whatever she brings in is not going to like the outrage, which... Has me that Infernape that I was kind of talking about. So now, Infernape is not going to like that outrage. And maybe I can take it out. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Possibly. Doesn't really matter. But it does live with just a sliver. But Life Orb damage and Sandstorm will be enough to take it out after she HP ices me to death. And like I said, I still got Starmie. I still got Infernape. And I really don't even need Starmie. I just need that Infernape because uh, my ape has a little thing that we like to call... Mock Punch, and uh, T-Tar really doesn't appreciate that, because, uh, you know, that can kind of kill a T-Tar. If you didn't know, uh, light punches at high speeds kill T-Tars. But no, the point is, I just Mock Punch and take it out, which will make that be the match. So, uh, yeah, good game, Zoe. That was, that was a fun match. Probably one of the better ones we've ever had, actually. So, you know, that's kind of a thing. So, uh, yeah, that'll be it for today um yeah like i said i'll try and stream sometime this week because my my fucking fifth gen stock is just terrible so i need to work that up a little bit but otherwise uh that'll be it for today's so hope you guys enjoyed it blah 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 rank comment sub and later guys